Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we're at day or food drop three. Mm -hmm. uh, this week we've, we're trying to get people to come and pick up their food as opposed to us taking it to them. So uh, we've just arrived at where the, the pickup point's going to be. And um, yeah, we're just waiting for the police to come so that we can make sure everybody's socially distancing and uh, orderly. Oh, and orderly, yeah. And uh, we're doing District 1 and 2 today and then District 3 and 4 tomorrow. So that's the plan. Hi there, we are Jill and Chris and we currently find ourselves in Uganda. On June 30th, we found out that the nearby villagers to us were starving. I'm coming at you with a really heavy heart right now. Um, I just found out that from our host, he just uh, went into the village with a couple tourists actually to take them on a village tour. And um, he's reported back that people are starving. We immediately sprung into action and after our plea on Facebook for friends to send money, we were able to raise enough to go purchase some food the very next day. We spent the afternoon that day sorting bags and packing food and getting it ready to deliver the next morning. By the end of the following day, food had been delivered to the entire village and nobody had to go to bed hungry that night. Since then, we have fed the villagers for five weeks now and are currently providing educational resources in the form of beekeeping, compost and soil building, and gardening techniques to help them move forward into a more sustainable future. Good morning, everybody. So, wow, it's been a big day already. It's uh, July 14th, and um, I just uh, met with the group of men who are coordinating the uh, repairs and um, things that need to be done to the composting building. So they're going to get that uh, all finished and we're going to uh, order the materials to pick up tomorrow and they'll have that thing whipped off in no time. So that's underway. We have the third food delivery coming. Well, it's getting unloaded right now. I'm just heading over there to check it out because we have a new storage facility. Uh, a friend has donated a room from his building, so that's where we're going to do all the packing from now on so our poor little gift shop isn't full of flour every week and dusting everything. And um, yeah, we're rolling, we're rolling right along. This is great. This is great. So uh, we're going to have people come pick up their food this week as opposed to us delivering it. So uh, close to this building will be a, a pickup place and uh, we have the, the community split into four districts. So district one and two will come on Friday and district two and three or three and four will come on Saturday. And uh, yeah, we think that's really going to, to help us out a lot because there won't be such a huge amount of manual labor to get it distributed to all the homes. Um, oh, and we have a water fill up today. So basically the water, the 8,000 liters of water lasts a week. So I've just said, tell the fire department because it's a fire truck from Kisese that fills up their big, huge 8,000 liter tanker just tell him up to fill it up every Tuesday so that people know that there's going to be just there'll be water there every week um, and uh, yeah yeah we're moving along we uh, we were folding paper pots last night all right so here we are making uh, newspaper pots for our seeds that we're going to be planting so uh, basically you just uh, there's a way that you fold the newspaper and it makes these little paper pots. Uh, Chris and I used to make these in Canada a lot for our garden. And you plant, you put your composted soil in there, you plant your seed in there, and then this can go directly in the ground. You don't have to take your plant out. Uh, the newspaper will biodegrade. And actually newspaper is carbon, which is really good for your plants. So um, yeah, it's a great, uh, great way to uh, plant your, your plants and uh, start your seeds. They won't be disrupted. <laughs> Awesome. So I started drawing seeds from our tomatoes and cucumbers and watermelon and, and some pumpkin. And, uh, you know, we'll just sort of dry some seeds as we go and, and get stuff planted. And uh, the, the plants can be given to people if they want to put them in their garden with some composted soil once we have the composted soil complete. Um, and yeah, we're just going to start planting them by our compost facility and, and start building a little community garden. And uh, yeah, we got tons of helpers on board. Everything's super exciting. 
sorry about the rocket in the background. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're definitely moving in the right direction. So this is pretty awesome. Thank you again to everybody who's contributing to this campaign. You're really, really making a huge difference in these people's lives. Um, not just now, but uh, for many years to come. We're, uh, we're educating them and we're going to show them how to, you know, grow their own food and be sustainable themselves and not have to, uh, you know, rely on outside help all the time. So, so yeah, this is very empowering and people are really excited. So thanks guys. Take care. All right. We're just coming up here to see how the packing's going and uh, bring these guys a little bit of money for a lunch break. Wow. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Looks <Anyone>? great. Anyone? <laughs> Good job. Wow. So, Ngambe, you guys are doing uh, 200? Uh, yeah. 200 bags? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, we have some money for you guys if you want to do a lunch break. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've decided to uh, to use just this building where the bags were packed because all the bags are in it now and instead of transporting them all the way down to our other spot there so so yeah we'll see how this works so they've changed the uh, the way they're doing things before they were looking for names on the list and checking them as it came but now they're calling out the names so if the person's here, they come and get it. And if they're not, they can get it later whenever they arrive or, or however. So yeah, it's great. Everything's getting organized here. <laughs> awesome. Okay, now we are on our way down to the compost site. People started picking up their food. And uh, they, we got all the supplies yesterday for um, the, the, to do the construction. So, we're... Hey guys, just an update uh, what we're up to today. I've uh, come into town to assist in the purchasing of the, um, the lumber and all the supplies that we're going to need to do the compost building. So uh, behind me here you can see uh, one of the lumber yards and all the guys are figuring out what's needed. And uh, we just paid for like a pitchfork and a, and a spade so that we can put that at the compost facility and um, all sorts of other like nails and wire and cement. We're going to put a cement floor in there. So, so yeah, we're moving right along here. It's uh, very exciting, very exciting. <laughs> Putting a roof on and a cement floor. And uh, the guys are getting started on that today. So now we're going to go uh, consult with them and see what they're up to and make sure that uh, things are going the right direction there. Yeah, <laughs> lots going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Hello, Mr. Chris. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> All right, we're just coming back talk to the guys they're just getting the floor leveled first so not much going on yet <laughs> and yeah we got a crowd forming down here people are excited <laughs> at our, our mural um, <laughs> we're still finding time once in a while to uh, to get to getting some of this painted we're working on the gift shop here um, really getting it decorated and uh, yeah we're 
we're rolling right along. So the, the project here has obviously taken a bit of a backseat, but uh, we're starting to find a groove like Chris and I just, um, you know, we were down where the food is getting handed out and just sort of checking on the process down there. And they look like they got a system in place. So, you know, we don't, uh, we don't necessarily have to be on the front lines of all of this. Um, most, a lot of this, you know, what we're trying to do here is to empower them to, to do their own thing and uh, have, have sort of the courage to, to figure out new ways moving forward. So, so as long as, you know, we're getting them set up sort of with systems and structures and uh, it'll get fine-tuned as they go, but uh, they'll, lear they'll learn the, the routine and um, yeah, we don't really need to be right there at the, at the front of it all. Kitten. Beatrice, Beatrice, you're knocking down things. Come here. Oh, oh my God. Okay, no, you can't be on there. <laughs> oh yes, we have a child now. <laughs> anyway, um, something that sort of has uh, dawned on me in the last couple days uh, that I kind of want to mention is um, the whole ripple effects that are that are taking place because of this. Um, you know, this, this act, small act of kindness, I guess, large act of kindness, whatever it is. Um, you know, of course people now are sustained. They're, they're, they're feeling good. Um, the, the policeman, I was talking to the police sergeant the other day or, or the chief of police. And he said that, you know, crime is down. Um, when, when people aren't hungry, there, there's less robberies, there's less theft, there's less domestic abuse. Um, there's less child abuse, you know, all these things sort of like, it's like a ripple effect. So he's, he's thankful for what we're doing. I mean, we're in a small village, so I don't think there would have been a ton of that kind of stuff, but <laughs> enough to keep them busy. So, so he's thankful. He said, we're making his job easier. Um, and of course there's the, eco the economic benefits, you know, I was talking to Chris, the other Chris, the one that's here that, that drives us into town every day. Uh, well, when we need to go to town, and you know, he he was a he was a guide uh, for tourism, so so he's definitely lost some income. He he does have a bit of a diversified income stream, though. He does beekeeping, and uh, he works. He does some consulting work, I think, as well. So he's he's good. But but you know, we're we're giving him extra money to go into Kasese, and then he now is getting some projects finished around his house. He's moving forward on on the things that he's been wanting to do because of sort of the money that we're paying him to transport us into town so um, you know there's just little small small ripples like that that are that are happening and and um, yeah it's really great he's putting guys to work and then you know it just keeps going down the line so but when I when I really was like analyzing this whole thing and thinking about it really hard it dawned on me that I think the biggest ripple effect that's come from this is um, the ripple of kindness and uh, you know the people here are just absolutely amazed that with what we're doing um a lot of you guys are telling me the same thing and uh you know i think when when people actually witness kindness like firsthand i think it sort of changes you at a cellular level you know um it touches people's hearts and i think out of everything i think this is going to be possibly you know one of the largest benefits of this of this whole gesture because I'm not only, um, you know, feeding people and, and getting people satiated, but we're now demonstrating how easy it is to be kind and how easy it is to do these kinds of projects, you know, really, really, it's just, it's just a matter of doing it, you know, and I think, I think a lot of, a lot of what's hitting me as well is the fact that Chris and I are here. We've gotten to know these people. We've seen the decline of what's going on. You know, it's so easy when you're sitting in your living room wherever and going oh yeah people are starving we hear it on the news all the time you know da, 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 da. there's no like there's no connection to that but because we were here and we got getting to know these people and we're seeing what's happening it's like okay whoa this is this is something can be done here you know it's um you have no frame of reference when you're sitting in canada or north america or, or europe or wherever of what people are actually going through it's it's uh it's really hard to to picture in your mind and uh yeah, we're just so thankful that, that we're here, we're seeing what's going on, and we're seeing the solutions, you know, we're working towards solutions. Um, there is solutions to these things. People need to get in touch with the earth, they need to grow food, they need to make soil, and you know, this, this information that we're providing to this community is going to ripple out from this community. And 
it's also dawned on me that we've taken on a small project here and really that's all any of us needs to do. You know, like when you think, oh, okay, yeah, good luck. Good luck feeding. You're going to feed all of Africa. Good luck with that. You know, of course not. (laughs) We're not going to fix all the problems in Africa, but we have a sphere of influence right here, right now, and we can help these people. When we help these people, they're going to start helping the next people. And then those people are going to start helping the next people. And this information is going to spread like wildfire. I'm telling you. People are so excited to learn. They, they are, they're, I mean, they've been suffering. They don't want to do that. They don't want to suffer anymore. <laughs> you know, that's not what life is all about. So, um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, if we all do our tiny little bit in our own communities, within our own sphere of influence, without getting overwhelmed by the massive picture of what's going on in the world, I really think that we would make a big difference. I really do. So that's my rant. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> we're doing good. And yeah, stay tuned. We're, we're, getting, we're getting through this mural. It's, uh, it's turning out really fun. Actually, I should just do a quick, quick show. This, this, um, this little village here mostly was painted before this project started. And I've realized since this project started that that's sort of my vision for the village once we get everything green and nice and growing again. Although the stream or the river will never happen because it just doesn't happen around here. But anyway, so, so, you know, we've been here for like five weeks before the project started. We've been here painting this mural and now I realize I've been painting my vision for the village. How exciting is that? (laughs) One more thing I just wanted to mention that uh, Chris and I were just talking about is um, we have no political agenda here in Uganda. Uh, We have no religious agenda here in Uganda. We're not here to like change how people think or, or how they do things, you know, like that's their culture, that's their business, that's the way they live their life, that's cool. Um, all we're do is doing is to come here to help people, um, get, give them food and uh, make sure that they have food and, and skills to move forward in these changing times. That's it. That's it. That's all we're here. That's all we're here to do is share knowledge and help people out. So, uh, yeah, we just wanted to, to get clear with that so, so people know. And, um, yeah, if you're uh, able to help us out in any way, we, we sure appreciate help from every direction. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you.